Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Glenn McCoy, Executive Director of the San Francisco Ballet. Glenn McCoy's career spans more than 25 years of management and operations experience in the classical performing arts. He held marketing positions in the San Francisco Opera and the Metropolitan Opera of New York, joined the San Francisco Ballet in 1987, and assumed the position of Executive Director in 2002. The San Francisco Ballet counts as one of the largest ballet companies in the United States. Founded in 1933 and since 1985 under the artistic direction of Helgi Thomason, the San Francisco Ballet has achieved an international reputation as one of the world's preeminent ballet companies. Glenn has generously agreed to share some of his insights with us. I'd like to thank you, Glenn, for joining us today. Thank you. So the classic arts in today's world is always a very interesting discussion. It is a, a repertoire that very often was created in another century or, or even a number of centuries ago, yet it remains a very vital, uh, yet in, in some cities, troubled uh, series of institutions, whether it's ballet, opera, symphonic music, Talk about the challenges of presenting a vital company and, and retaining this, the vitality of this, uh, of this art in today's world. The fact that we deal with the same themes as any art uh, that are human, uh, that continues to make classical ballet or the classical arts relevant in today's world. Um, but I think the challenges uh, tend to be around the expense of continuing to produce those kinds of stories. Um, and that's what we grapple with, you know, sustainability of our art form. Um, because in terms of sort of relevance, when I look at the ballet's audience, um, they're a very big mix of age and uh, cultures. Uh, so people bring whatever their own experience is to our experience. Uh, so. I, I worry less about relevance uh, than I do affordability. And different cultures, uh, uh, particularly the cultures uh, in the Bay Area, um, are, are very um, connected to physical movement, to dance, to uh, physical expression. We are behind New York, the second largest dance community in the United States. Uh, hundreds of uh, of dance organizations and independent dance artists, uh, large and small, um, create this very rich uh, tapestry of uh, expression through movement in the Bay Area. Talk about uh, Helgi's philosophy uh, in terms of, of programming for this audience and for advancing the art. I think that uh, that is the secret to the ballet's uh, success uh, under Helgi's uh, direction. Um, a lot of people, when he took the company, were concerned that we would become New York City Ballet West. Uh, it didn't happen. We have a lot of uh, a repertoire uh, from Balanchine and also Jerome Robbins. Um, but from the very first season, Helgi um, invited other choreographers to come and create work on the company. He is remarkably generous. Uh, as a director in the way he turns over a very well-trained uh, company of dancers who can perform a variety of styles uh, to choreographers. So uh, because of that generosity uh, and because he has a very good eye for talent, uh, he has been able to create some very important relationships with the leading choreographers of the day, uh, particularly Mark Morris, uh, Christopher Wielden. Uh, I think we probably have more uh, Mark Morris repertory than any other company other than Mark's own company. And we certainly have uh, as much uh, Wielden repertory, new works, uh, as any other company. You certainly present um, uh, uh, classic works uh, as, as part of your repertoire, uh, but it is, it is quite astounding how many new works uh, you bring to the stage here? Helgi uh, really feels that in order for us to move the art form forward, he has to make the creation of new work a priority. 
Um, that is, has been true for our last three, at least, long-range plans. Uh, it's true of the one we've just approved uh, at the organization for the next five years. Uh, the creation of new work is our number one priority, um, or the acquiring of work that's new to San Francisco Ballet. Uh, those are two ways that we feed our repertoire, and by commissioning new work, we feed that of, of the, the ballet repertoire in general. Um, he also believes that we have to perform the classics and perform them well in order to keep the dancing sharp. Uh, it all, our ability to do, to perform this wide range of styles depends on the technique uh, that he and his staff instill in the company of dancers. That also extends in the uh, cultivation of new talent as well. Uh, could you talk about your various programs? You have a, a range of educational programs and you have a, a range of uh, programs to cultivate uh, dancers and to bring, to refresh your uh, corps de ballet. If you think of the San Francisco Ballet Association um, in three parts, uh, there is the professional company, um, and that's of course the season that we present at the Opera House uh, and take on tour. Uh, there is the San Francisco Ballet School, which is as old as the company and is one of the leading uh, classical ballet academies uh, in the world uh, with an international faculty. Uh, we train about 350 students uh, per year. Annually. And then the third strand is the Center for Dance Education, and that, uh, that covers all of our community uh, education programs um, as well, you know, and uh, in the schools and adult programs, uh, lecture series, anything having to do with educating and audience building falls under Center for Dance Education. The Center for Dance Education has a program that is over 30 years old called Dance in Schools. And we are in, I think, 34 public schools in San Francisco. Uh, we focus on underserved communities. And we deal, it's a 10-week residency with uh, second and third graders. And so uh, we send teams of musicians and instructors into these schools and work with the kids using world music. We don't really you know, try to teach them ballet moves at that age. Uh, we try to get them comfortable in their body. Uh, build self-esteem, uh, all the things you want uh, to be doing through art with kids at that age. But the idea of connecting discipline to performance is, is so important in, in what you do. And teamwork, and teamwork, the ability to work together. And uh, it, uh, there we take about 65 or 75, uh, depending on the year, students that we identify in this program uh, and scholarship them to the ballet school. Uh, we, we provide their rehearsal clothes, their shoes. Uh, all we ask is that the parents, you know, commit to getting the kids there and, uh, and because it becomes, you know, an involvement with the entire family. Right. You create in, in that environment not only a great learning environment, but a great environment for community encounter and, and connect, connectedness. Exactly. And um, while it's not the primary goal, we have, on occasion, identified uh, talented youngsters who went on to professional dance careers. That's so, wonderful. So I like to, to think that programs like that, and other companies do them, uh, really are chasing, uh, changing the face of uh, classical ballet. When we travel abroad, uh, inevitably critics will comment on the diversity of our company of different you know, colors, different sizes, different shapes, different uh, training. You mean, you mean the company looks like San Francisco? Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's one of the things we're most proud of. Uh, talk about your international uh, work. Um, how extensive is it? It's, uh, well, unfortunately, it's a, we, we're on the road a little less uh, these days than we were a few years ago. But about uh, 15 years ago, uh, we made a conscious decision to focus on international uh, touring. Uh, the reason for that is in order to build an international reputation, you had to be seen in the dance capitals of the world. Uh, it's an expensive yes. proposition, um, but it has paid off because consistently we were able to go to London or Paris 
uh, and of course New York, um, and come back with very positive reviews, which we then could leverage here for support uh, in San Francisco. And you're also judged against a different standard. You're judged against a world standard. It, it, it doesn't invalidate the uh, being judged against a U.S. standard, but you also are exposing yourself to criticism, to new ideas, to new audience response. Um, it is part of the development of, of this, this uh, company and, and its international reputation. And it's part of our ability to attract the very best talent, both dancers and choreographers. Which is an international game. Exactly. Exactly. We draw from a, an international pool of talent. And I think at right now uh, we have dancers representing more than 20 countries. You have a very considerable operation. You have um, uh, marketeers, you have communications experts, uh, PR people, uh, fundraisers, you uh, have operations people. Talk about your, your organization and how you facilitate how you create this this great environment that allows uh, Helgi and others to um, to present this this wonderful art to the community. What I love about being in ballet is that there's a there is it sounds you know it sounds cliche but it, there is a family dynamic. I'll tell a story when I first started in my career. Um, I decided that I would evaluate every opportunity uh, based on my answer to three questions. Uh, the first is, would I be proud of the work? Would I be proud of my association with this producing company? Uh, the second thing would be, did I like and respect the people I'd be working with? And the third thing, uh, did it look like it was going to be fun? And if it didn't look like it was going to be fun, I just would pass. And every time an opportunity to take on a new role at San Francisco Ballet has, uh, has come up, I have been able to answer yes to all three questions. And I think that says something about uh, what really makes the whole thing work. And it's really about the people who come together uh, with uh, clarity around their roles and responsibilities to the enterprise. Uh, and working together and going in, in one direction. That's not always easy to do, but uh, I do believe that that's the secret uh, to, to our success. In meeting with members of your board, they really have a very good sense of what proper governance is about. It's a very high-functioning group. Um, it's not a rubber stamp board. Um, I feel that each of them is available to me as an individual resource at any time. Uh, and collectively, um, they consistently make uh, really smart decisions. And that's sometimes hard to do when you have, there are, there are about 68 trustees right now. And uh, so there are, a lot, there are 68 opinions. But uh, because everyone comes together around the primary goal, and that is to support the work, uh, as Helgi has envisioned it, um, we tend to work through the, the difficulties and get uh, everybody moving in the right direction. You've also cultivated a very uh, wonderful staff. Uh, could you talk about how you select people? I think that Helgi and I would both agree that the best part about being the boss is that you get to choose who you work with. Uh, and so um, we both have been able to surround ourselves with people who are not only very, um, very smart uh, and experienced, uh, but they are, as you, as you say, very passionate about what we're doing. And uh, that is what I look forward to every day when I show up at the ballet, uh, working with some very creative minds. Could you talk a bit about um, the financial dimensions of this institution? The uh, San Francisco Ballet is this year, uh, I think, the second largest ballet company in America, um, under uh, behind uh, New York City Ballet, which is about 60 million uh, uh, budget per year. Uh, and we sort of switch uh, places with American Ballet Theater depending on the year. But I think this year we're number two. We're at about 42 million uh, is our operation annually. And uh, that breaks down in terms of about 41% of that comes from ticket sales. 
okay. Nutcracker. Uh, interestingly, uh, Nutcracker is about 42% of that number. Um, and 41% comes from uh, contributions. About 10% right now comes from the annual draw from the endowment investments. Um, and then the remaining uh, comes from other income, like school tuition or boutique sales and that sort of thing. So that is a pretty standard uh, breakdown for a, an American ballet company. In 2008, uh, in May, we had finished our 75th anniversary season, um, an absolutely enormous undertaking with you know books and television and 11 world premieres. It's quite Very, astounding. It was an amazing experience. Uh, we actually then rolled into an American tour with four American cities, something we hadn't done in a very long time. Uh, but we felt that as old, uh, the oldest professional ballet company in America, we, need, we needed to do that. And while we were on tour uh, that fall was when everything, <laughs> everything uh, went south. And so coming off of this incredible high, uh, suddenly, we were faced with uh, declines in contributions, and ticket sales, and the endowment investments, and uh, we had to do a lot of uh, adjusting, which we did uh, earlier and faster, uh, faster and perhaps deeper than than a lot of other organizations. Uh, I think that served us well. Um, because when we began to trend back up, what we had decided was we were going to do everything we could to maintain our commitment to new work. And uh, we made slight reductions in the size of the company and also in the staff. But um, Helgi and I had a, a, an, a, an important conversation uh, at the beginning of that experience. And we decided um, we were going to, the product was still very, very strong. And uh, we were not going to cut to the point where you could tell on stage. We were going to maintain our commitment to the work and uh, tighten our belts everywhere else and drive revenue as hard as we could. Um, it was difficult, but uh, ultimately I think we all agree that it was the right decision. So the new season, how does that look? Uh, it's fantastic. Every time I think Helgi has topped himself, uh, uh, something uh, he'll come up with a season that I find just completely engaging. Uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, new pieces, uh, full-length story ballets. Uh, Krenko's uh, Eugenia Njegen mm. uh, will be coming for the first time. Very beautiful production um, that we've never performed before. Um, it premiered um, in Toronto last summer. And uh, also we are doing a new production, or new physical production, meaning sets and costumes, um, for Don Quixote, which is the uh, story ballet that Helgi and Yuri Posakov choreographed a few years ago. But we've been renting those uh, sets and costumes uh, for all this time. And the piece is so popular, uh, we decided we would design and build our own. And the designer is uh, two-time Tony um, winner uh, Marty Pakladinas, uh, who also did the costumes for our Nutcracker. So we're very excited about those. We've got uh, the return of some really wonderful work like Wayne McGregor's Chroma, which was a sensation last year. Uh, there's a new Mark Morris piece coming, a uh, new Yuri Posakov piece, um, and uh, Ashley Page, who is the uh, artistic director at Scottish Ballet, uh, is doing his first work for us, uh, as is uh, Edward Liang. I can't wait to see it myself uh, in this next year. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us, and thank you, Glenn, for sharing your insights. Thank you, Mark.